Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. Today is Sunday, April 25th, 2021. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now first, let me apologize. This is my second video of the day. I made one earlier where I talked about a fight that's not scheduled to take place. Floyd Mayweather against Jake Paul. I got confused. Floyd's next fight is supposed to be against Logan Paul, not Jake Paul. Um, I have a standard policy here where I try not to take down videos. So I'm going to leave that video up. Sometimes I have to take down a video because of technical difficulties right? Blank spaces, bad audio, uh, things like that. Um, but I try when I complete a video to just leave it up. Uh, maybe someday Floyd will fight Jake Paul. I believe Floyd is going to crush Logan Paul. If you look at the Logan Paul fight that he lost, you'll notice he backs away from the pocket with his head up. I believe a Mayweather is just going to linger in the pocket, wait for him to make that mistake, and then crush him. I don't believe Logan Paul has the power of Jake Paul. I believe Jake Paul is an outlier, a guy who we view as a celebrity who's actually a very good boxer. I can't say the same for Logan Paul, right? So one man's opinion, I believe Floyd Mayweather beats both guys. I believe the fight against Jake Paul would be more interesting. Now let's talk about Jorge Linares against Devin Haney. I believe this is an interesting fight. What I want people to do, and it's in my favorites folder right now, is uh, look at a sparring session that Devin Haney had against Shakur Stevenson. You need to pay attention to both guys. They're both unbeaten. Understand they both are very fast-handed. Right? I would argue neither of them wants you to get too close to them. Neither of them wants to really fight inside. Devin Haney is the bigger man, weight-wise. Right? Both guys very skilled. Shakur Stevenson, Southpaw. Let me just say this. Um, it's fascinating looking at that footage. How Devin Haney is able to back up Shakur Stevenson. They both have their moments. They both have their moments. But Devin Haney has certain gifts that people need to pay attention to. He's fast, and he just knows how to back you up, right? What he's doing is very. I give him the edge on Linares. I think he beats Linares because Devin Haney can lead with anything. In other words, uh, Devin Haney doesn't have to jab his way in. This is a guy who can lead with a left hook. He can lead with a straight right. Right? He can get you backing up. He can throw power shots early. He's fast. You don't know what he's throwing. Right? He's the running back who you can't tell if he's going left or right. I believe Linares is a guy who likes to do things in pattern, right? So if you, if you look at his fight against Carlos Morales, and that's the fight he had after he lost to Pablo Cesar Cano, a guy with more power than Morales, a guy with a better record than Morales, right? Understand that Linares, after going up to 140 and getting blown out by Cano, right, hits the canvas multiple times early. And understand, that's a problem Linares has had in his career. He gets blown out early by Salgado. In other words, Linares is a guy who wants to get in rhythm. You'll notice the way he gets in rhythm against Carlos Morales, and I have the highlights in my favorites folder here, is he'll do things like he'll throw a left hand to the body. Then he comes back with a right hand up top. At his core, 
Linares is a guy who likes to throw combinations. The big punch is a few punches into the combination. He needs that for rhythm purposes. Right? Now, the key with Devin Haney is to understand that Devin Haney is what I call more of a jazz musician. Right? Devin Haney can come in with the shot he intends to land. Devin Haney also is conscious of distance. So against Yorkies Gamboa, he doesn't allow Gamboa to get inside. Right? He can do that because of his speed and because of his two-handedness and ability to lead with power shots. In other words, Haney, who has some of the best legs in boxing, right? Haney is a guy who is a master of timing with a diverse repertoire that doesn't always translate in the CompuBox numbers. So it's fascinating. You're watching him against Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson has a habit where he makes sounds when he throws punches. Right? So you know when Stevenson's going to throw. It's something Stevenson's going to have to grow out of. Sean Porter used to have this problem. Right? So Stevenson's there, and Stevenson's rhythm is such that he... He has to say, huh, 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 as he's throwing punches. And you'll notice that Haney, at least in my opinion, is able to exploit that because Haney, again, like a jazz guy, the rhythm is fluid. Haney's fluidity allows him to do things like move, move forward, hit you with power shots, back you up, then open up on you. Now, he sparred before with Linares. That's important. In my favorites folder is an interview that Linares gave where he talks about his sparring session with Haney as well as his experience sparring with Ryan Garcia. Right? In the interview, I believe it's... Um, I don't want to get the website wrong. Just look in my favorites folder. Linares makes the claim that Ryan Garcia hits harder than Devin Haney. As an aside, I thought Garcia was going to have a very hard time with Javier Fortuna, who can loop his punches. We'll save that for another video. Let's just say, maybe Garcia, who is a blessed puncher, hits harder than Haney. But Garcia doesn't have anything close to Haney's unexpectedness and fluid rhythm. I believe Haney is going to be able to get Linares on his back foot. I believe Haney is going to be able to confuse Linares and Linares won't be able to fully fight back because Linares needs to touch you first before he hurts you. The rhythm on the guys is totally different. I believe Haney can actually lead with power shots and regroup. I believe Haney's fluidity and his ability to keep a Linares away from his body. In other words, Linares won't get to throw the right hand up top that he likes to throw after the left hand down low because Haney won't let it. In other words... If Linares lands the left hand down low, which would be a miracle in and of itself because Haney's legs allow him to hide his body. Haney's movement is going to have Haney move out of the way before Linares is able to land that second shot. Right? Haney has a pot shotter mode that allows him to keep combination punchers off of him. I like Haney in this fight. Let me also say too, Linares is 35. There's an age dynamic. And Linares fades in fights. He starts fight fast against Luke Campbell. Campbell comes back on him. 
right? He's competitive with Loma early. Loma comes back on him. Starts to dominate later in the fight. Well, here he's in against a young lion who, quite frankly, is not going to allow him the fast start, right? Haney doesn't allow you to get close to his body early. Haney's a fast starter himself, who then is going to tire out Linares because Linares is going to start to reach for Haney when he realizes that he can't land punches on him. I like Haney here. I think Haney is unique because of his fluid rhythm. Let me say this too, and it needs to be said. The Lomachenko who beats Linares, in my opinion, would beat a fighter he lost to, Teofimo Lopez. I believe Lopez is a world beater on his front foot. I believe he'd be a different fighter on his back foot. And you'll notice Lomachenko is able to back up Linares, right, who is advanced. So one wonders, you know, Loma's supposed to have had a bad shoulder. One wonders what exactly happened in his fight against Teofimo Lopez. I'd like to see that rematch, right? Let me also say, too, that I know Linares wants you to believe that he's in the best shape of his life. There has to be a reason why he decided to go up to 140 to fight Pablo Cesar Cano, who in the past has fought as high as 147, right? To me, an older fighter, and let's remember, Linares is in his mid-30s, right? An older fighter starts to have problems making weight. Given how loaded 135 is, right? Lomachenko, Haney, Teofimo Lopez, and given the comparative anonymity at 140, I think 140 is loaded, but people aren't walking around calling out Josh Taylor's name, right? I believe Linares, being older, is having problems making 135. And to me, that's a big problem against a guy who moves as well with the fluid rhythm that Devin Haney does. I like Devin Haney in this fight. I'm expecting Haney to pull away as the fight goes forward. I would not be surprised if Linares, who goes down against Lomachenko, who fades later in fights at this age, when pressed, who had a problem recovering in the Cano fight, and that's a recent fight. I think Linares is going to look worse than expected. I believe he's the most substantial opponent that Haney has faced. But let's just say Haney today is more advanced than he was before. He's always had great legs. But now he's able to, even when he's not landing more punches, back guys up like he does Shakur Stevenson in their sparring video. I think his rhythm is unique in boxing, right? Again, he can lead with anything, and I mean anything, right? He doesn't need the rhythm. He doesn't need to establish rhythm with a jab. And of course, you can't get close to him. He's figured out how to move without moving so far back that he's up against the ropes. I like Devin Haney against Jorge Linares. I would not be surprised if Haney wins this fight by stoppage, which he did not do against Yorkies Gamboa. I like Haney to win. I'm going to sprinkle a little on Haney by stoppage. 
That's how I see this fight. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Simply put, Haney's going to be hard for Linares to time. If Linares can't get the timing down, he won't be able to land power shots. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.